say this man has robbed so many banks in Oregon and Washington, he's earned a nickname from the FBI, the River Rat Bandit. Uh, this was a guy who, <clears throat> who uh, victimized uh, a lot of people, robbed a lot of banks and credit unions and check cashing locations from Vancouver, Washington, all the way up to Kent. He's been busy, but also elusive. Even when caught on surveillance camera, police have not been able to find him. This person was uh, not only committing a lot of robberies, but was getting a little more violent each time. I, I, you know, we could feel that this was not going to end well. But finally, a break in the case. Surveillance video reveals a new clue. So I'm plugging in the computer and take a look at it, and shows him coming in and, and grabbing onto the side stanchion on the side of the counter, putting his hand on top and heisting himself over the uh, counter. And right in that precise spot on the counter, officers at the scene were able to lift the print. It was sent to the Regional Automated Fingerprint Identification System, or APHIS, a database of more than 600,000 sets of prints. APHIS got a hit. One day I just happened to be walking into the station and found the notification from APHIS. I'm looking at it and, hmm, hey, what case number is Oh, oh, that's a positive hit. They got one single print and within literally hours, we not only had the identification, but the location of that person. And uh, uh, Pierce County and Puyallup uh, picked that person up again within hours, and that person was arrested. It was great. It was really good. Fingerprints are the key to a person's identity. No two people in the world have the same ridge characteristics, not even identical twins. But prints at crime scenes are often invisible to the naked eye. They're called latent prints. When we refer to the term latent print, so we're looking for fingerprints at a crime scene that are left inadvertently. Kind of like when you and I touch our refrigerator or a glass of water, we leave our fingerprints behind. Uh, latent means hidden or um, unseen. So you need generally need some sort of process to make it visible to the naked eye. Sherry Rosper is a latent print examiner who specializes in making invisible prints appear. But before she applies different chemical processes, she relies on an old, low-tech trick. Your normal uh, garden variety super glue. That's right, super glue to make sure the evidence sticks. Do the first thing we do um, is we visualize it. If we don't see anything, we put it in the fume tank and we super glue it. Our guns, knives, cans, any kind of slick surface. Fingerprints are 98, 99% water. The super glue polymerizes the print onto the item and it makes it a lot less fragile. That way we can do anything we want to after it. Again, we look at it to see if there's anything on it and take pictures. We put it through a dye stain process, hit it with an ALS, an alternate light source, see if there's any fingerprints on it. Then we take it in black powder and uh, lift. For unsolved crimes and the detectives investigating them, this process and the mysteries they reveal are key. It's really gratifying when I have a case and the detectives have no suspects at all, and I'm able to come up with a suspect for them. Latent print at a crime scene can be as small as the tip of a, of a pencil eraser. We can just, we can deal with very small pieces of latent prints left behind. And so it really takes a, a trained eye and expertise to take that latent fingerprint and compare it, compare it against the known print in file. That's why latent print examiners respond to most major crime scenes. They carefully and expertly dust surfaces that might reveal prints left behind. You've got your typical rear view mirrors, your door handles, things that are going to render good prints. It can be very important. Sometimes it's the only evidence in a case. Is this real world process as glamorous as it's depicted in forensic shows like CSI? Absolutely not. <laughs> I, I, I laugh. You know, when you go to a crime scene, you get dirty. And sometimes you're crawling in spaces that you don't want to crawl into. Generally, I wear a, a black t-shirt, black jeans, and black shoes so that when I come out of there, my face is black, but <laughs> you can't see the black on the rest of me, so. But there's new technology that will make comparing prints easier. The APHIS database will soon include palm prints. Well, right now, our current 
aphis that is over 20 years old only stores and matches against the tips of the fingers, the first joints. And in the future, with our new computer, we will be able to match and store against the entire hand and even the side of the hand, so that we'll have so much more information to be able to collect and use from crime scenes, to be able to identify these people that, and where they don't get away with the crimes is, to me, invaluable. It has real results in real time that actually puts bad guys in jail. It is, I think in terms of its cost, it's a great deal. I think in terms of its effectiveness, it's a great deal.